All right, today we're going to do a compression test on a 1975 FJ40 with a 1969-ish small block Chevy. Um, I'm going to show you basically what you need to do to check the cylinder compression, make sure you don't have a bad valve, drop piston rings, um, and make sure that uh, it's something that's viable for you to put in another cruiser or to sell to, or to buy. So um, this right here is a compression tester from like the 1960s. It's USA made. You can get a good compression tester for about 15 to 30 bucks at your local normal hard or not hardware store, but a parts store. Um, anyway, it's very simple. I'm going to show you guys uh, basically how to do it. Okay, so step one is basically you want to remove your remove your plug, your plug wires. Take all your spark plugs out, and then put on um, a clamp device of some kind to your fuel line. So you don't get any extra fuel into the into the cylinders. Just disconnect your ignition power to your distributor, so you don't have any spark coming out of the spark plug wires. And then, basically, if you have another set of hands, that person can go into the truck and hold the throttle wide open and hit the key at the same time. And basically, you want to run the cylinders for about five to ten seconds with this in where your spark plug goes. Okay. Um, and then it's going to give you a reading. But the, the throttle has to be wide open throttle, and you can't have any gas. And then you just move down the cylinders, and you just mark you know, on a piece of paper, whatever you have, what cylinder pressure you have for each cylinder. And then it'll let you know, based on your altitude, if you've got compression, good compression or not. Different models are obviously do different, different things, but there will be an adapter to go into your type of spark plug. Whatever spark plug you have, you find the adapter that comes with your kit and you match the threads and the size and you just plug this in and if you need an extension hose I always run the extension hose just because it's a little bit easier to kind of move around and deal with and then go ahead and plug this into your hose when you're ready to do your test um, and as soon as the needle goes up as far as it goes that's how much compression you have and then when you're done you press the, uh, the air button here it releases the pressure inside the hose itself and that way you can disconnect and go to the next uh, spark plug all right, so what we did on the 75 with the V8 was I couldn't get any pressure on the number two cylinder. So I switched compression gauges, maybe thinking this had a hole in the line or something like that. Threw another one in there and it did the same thing. Ended up going through both banks and found out that it was around 120 to 130 PSI on the cylinders, which is good. You kind of want them all average. You don't want ones jumping up high or low. You kind of want them just within 5 to 10 of each other, and that's um, the, the norm. But on number two, we, didn't, we couldn't get anything. So I popped, out, popped off the, um, the valve cover and found that the rocker arm was loose. Tightened that down to try and get the valve to open all the way. And it was what it appeared to be when we were cranking it over. We still weren't getting any compression on that cylinder, but the valve was opening. So that lends us to believe that either the piston has a hole in it, or there's no piston there, or a ring is broken and not creating compression at all, um, which can be an expensive fix and it can also be inexpensive depending on the motor and if your buddies have parts or if you're uh, able to do it yourself. All right. So if you find that your compression numbers are all over the map and you have a bunch of high ones and a bunch of low ones. Say you had like three, three at 130 and then um, the rest of them were at 100, 105. That basically means three or cylinders are good and the rest of them are all worn out for whatever reason. I mean, it could be valve adjustment, it could be pistons, it could be the rings, it could be, it could be a lot of things. But if there's a big jump, that the, the weaker cylinder is obviously where the problem lies. No, it just kind of depends on altitude and how old the motor is. I mean, it's, you know, we ran one that was a 69. We ran one and it, it was showing up at 140 to 130 across the board, you know, which is good compression for up here. That's really good. Um, around 100 on a straight six up here, it's just worn out. You know, we did one, I don't know, three weeks ago on a 78 and it was 100, 105 all the way around, you know. It's just worn out. It probably needs a, it needs a full rebuild. You know, it still runs. It just doesn't have the pop, and it, it's not going to have the pop that it used to. That's for sure. So, what numbers would you want to see? Uh, you, you know, anything between like a, 115 is probably the lowest I would kind of want to see. 115 to 120 would be nice. 125, 130 is good. 140 is good. You know, even better. So, um, anything below 110, and then you're you know 110 for me is kind of like the line where it's just, it's old. I mean, we'll put fuel injection 
kits on straight sixes, and if they're below 110, I won't do it. Just because the motor will never run right, ever. It just doesn't have enough pop. There's nothing left. I mean, it's still good for a carburetor or whatever, and you know, I mean, obviously they still run and drive down the road, but they're just not fresh anymore. They're 40 years old, what do you expect? It's just a thing. So, that's it, man.